Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, animate and clip to your paint for the first time if you're a beginner, special animation beginners. Um, so the first thing I did was click new and then actually hit cancel. So go back to file, click new, go over to the play button. That's where the animation project new tab is. Um, the animation project tab comes with three pre-made uh, frame formats for templates. Like there's your normal, your HD, and high quality HD. We're gonna use normal, and then I think we should name this since it's tutorial animation underscore tutorial. Okay, I fix that in, it goes uppercase. Okay, so after that, you click OK, go to the bottom, and then that little arrow I clicked at, that's your timeline. And then we're gonna animate a ball, a bouncing ball, because why not? Thing with Clip Studios UI in general, it's really simple and easy to learn, especially with the animation complex. So, I'm going to be using a, a pen because I like to use pens a lot. So, I draw a ball. Okay, I got a ball down. It's cool. Then, when I hit the next layer, it disappears. So, what do I do about it? You don't know where to draw. Luckily for you, there's a thing called onion skin, which I just click where my mouse was, and then the ball comes back from the last frame, and then you can follow the pathway. Because in general, of animation in general, it's all about the path, like the starting point and key to in between. So right now what I'm doing is, on the third frame, I'm pretty much making the ball stretch a little bit, like at speed. And then, it's more stretching and then it hits the ground at its normal size, followed by a slight squish. I had to raise it up so it fit in a frame. And then, add more of a squish. I changed the ball into a slight shape of a bean. And then after that, I made it more squished out, like a, like a squished bean, and then I had like this little surface effects, and then pretty much after that, you get that. So, you want to make it bounce back up now, do you, sometimes you can redraw it and make it more fluent, but if you're in a hurry, you can just, you can pretty much do this. Move over to a blank cell, hit specify cells, and hit the last number you hit, not seven, but six. And then keep doing that, pretty much come backwards, until it gets back to a starting point. Two, three, two, one. So, we got a bouncing ball now. So, I'm changing the timeline, ending the frame at frame 14, so it can loop. And then I'm changing, I'm preferring to speed so it won't lag as much. Unfortunately, the frame rate was a little too high for what I'm going for, so. I go down and change the frame rate to, uh, I believe I changed it to 20. That was like 20 or 19 to 18. And then after I did that, it made it more smoothed out. So pretty much that's how you animate, but we're, I'm not gonna stop right there. Okay, so I'm gonna add another folder. And then we're gonna do a color separation line. Around this point, I did a little mess up because uh, I drew on the wrong layer. But as you see right there, I draw the wrong, wrong, wrong layer, so I have to go back and fix that. I had to do some undoing and then find where the culprit was. To my uh, unfortunate part, I drew in the, original, in the first uh, folder layer, so I had to make sure and be careful in the race, make sure I didn't hit nothing. So after that, I, I kind of went back into the second layer. Of the folder where the color separation line because another thing about animation is with color separation is when you draw like a blue or green or red line like the blue line could be like for shadows the green line could be like for uh, highlights and then like the red line could be for some additional of the shadow and highlights so right now what i'm doing is i'm drawing in a blue line where it can separate at so now what i'm doing is right there i kind of messed up so i have to make sure to follow the path line Sorry about that, I, I get some weird ads sometimes from my emails. So after that, what you do is, same thing you did from the first part of animating the ball, you kind of count back with the specified cells. Four, three, two, and one. Now you kind of got a ball with a color separation, cool. So now, next thing we gotta do is 
create a third animation folder and the first cell for the animation for the base color so I have to hide the color separation and at this point I forgot to uh, enable multiple referring of all layers so it won't bleed outside the uh, selective option. So right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of coloring the ball down until I get to 7. Right there. You see the issue? Um, right there. I forgot to draw in a basic line for uh, that ball at the bottom which was something I should have fixed. It was something, that's another thing too with the frame borders, if you don't pay attention close enough or focus on, like you're supposed to, you miss some parts and then you gotta go back and fix it, which is okay, but if you do it all the time, then you need to train yourself. So after that, it's now animated and now we're about to specify the cells, count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. And now you got an animated ball. So now that the ball is animated, um, we're gonna add a new folder animation layer and then add an animation cell. And then we're gonna set it to linear burn. This is for the shadows that are gonna apply to the color separation layer. Okay, at this point, I'd add a, I accidentally made a little mess up and I had to figure out for a little bit what I did wrong. And then I realized I was coloring on the wrong layer. And also this animation cell was placed in the wrong um, cell count, so I had to go back and uh, fix that. So what I did was scroll down and I seen one was like in its wrong area, so I had to clear that. And then I went around and uh, pretty much started coloring each cell shade part until it was complete. So kind of after that, after I did that, I went back to specify cells and I started counting to six, five. Four, three, two, three, three, sorry, two, I was off, one. So I hit that and then I played it again and it was coming out as I wanted. Um, after that, I kind of went through it a few times just to make sure. The program itself doesn't show it fully smoothed out like it's supposed to because the program can lag sometimes and that's okay, it's normal. So what I did was I went to File, Animation Explorer, and then you explore it as a GIF, Image Sequence, or, I mean, or Movie, or OpenTunes compatible since it's OpenTunes compatible, same way around with OpenTunes Equip Studio. Um, image Sequence for like reference, so we're gonna, so now we're gonna render it as a GIF. So I saved it over into my desktop. And then I saved it like this, changed the frame rate to 25, and then I enabled dithering. I never knew what that what that did. All I knew was kind of like when I enabled it, I guess it smooths it out more a little bit, like some transition maybe. And then after that I was saved, I closed my desktop and then opened this up and I had to give it a little because um, the first time I opened up this the Windows photo viewer kind of crashed on me. I don't know why. I kind of never liked how Windows new thing since Windows 10 um, this update the new photo viewer so that caused that to crash um, so I had to give it a little bit to load up so pretty much in the end it crashed and I had to give it a moment to load up again So right here it pops up, it's processing a little bit so it can replay. And then I'm about to close it out and then there we go. The ball is animating, but we animated, came out smooth and perfected. Um, this is what it really looks like in real time animation after you render it. And I hope everybody enjoyed this, so please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and if you want our tutorial for more complex animation just give this video a thumbs up and comment below. Either way I'll still make it for you guys because I want to help you guys. So again, once again, thank you for watching and everybody has a, have a great day or night.